Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In the last lecture, we covered the theory of AAA, authentication, authorization, and accounting. In this lecture, you'll see how to configure it. Now, in the latest version of iOS, it's moved to a different command syntax for configuring AAA. But before this latest version, for a long time, it used the old way of doing it that you can see on the slide here. And you'll still see this being used a lot in the field, so I'll cover the old configuration first. And first I'll show you the radius config, then I'll show you the TACAX plus config, they're both very similar. So the old way of doing radius. First thing that we want to do is to configure a backup username. When you use AAA, you tell the router or the switch that whenever you need to authenticate somebody, whenever you're checking their username and password, we're not using a locally configured username. The user is on the AAA server. Now, you can configure it that it will use only the AAA server. But the problem with this is that if the device loses connectivity to the server, if there's an issue with the server or if there's an issue with the network getting to the server and you've just configured it to use AAA only, then nobody's going to be able to log into that device at all. So what you want to do is configure a local username and that will be used just as a backup. So if the AAA server is available, if the router or switch can communicate with it, then users cannot log in with the backup username. But if the router or switch cannot communicate with the AAA server, then it fails over to using the local username. So this means that you can still get into the device. It stops you from getting locked out of it. So to do that, we need to configure a username. This is the standard command for that. So we say username, here I've used a username of backup admin, and then the secret, the password is flatbox1. So that is our backup user in case we lose connectivity to the AAA server. Then for the rest of our AAA config, at global config, we say AAA new model. There is no AAA old model command, Triple A new model just means that we're enabling Triple A on this device. Then we configure where our Triple A servers are. We're using Radius here. So we say Radius server host, and we've got 10.10.10.10, and then we say key flak box one. You configure a matching password on the Triple A server and on the router and that allows them to use triple a with each other we don't want to just have one server we want to have at least two for redundancy so here we've also configured radius server host 10.10.10.11 and it's using key flat box 2. so that's our radius servers added then optionally we can put these into a group so you can have different groups of different servers if you want to it's not really that common to use that but the Functionality is there if you want to. To do that, we say triple A group server radius and then give it a name. Here I've called it FBRG for flat box radius group. Then under there, you say the servers that are going to go in the group. So we've got server 10.10.10.10 and server 10.10.11, the ones that we configured earlier. Then to enable triple A for authentication, we say triple A authentication login default group radius local if you don't specify a particular group of servers then this means that it it can use all of the radius servers that you've configured on that particular device so that's the first way you can do it the other way you can do it if you have specified a particular group is you would say triple a authentication login default group fbrg the group that we configured and then local so with both of those we've got radius and then local that means that the first choice is to use the radius servers only if the radius servers cannot be reached it will fall back to using the local username so that's how you configure authentication you can configure authorization as well with triple a authorization if you go on to the ccnp level or you do the security track you'll see these extra triple a commands 
Okay, so that is the old configuration. The new configuration, it just came out with the latest version of iOS. So on the latest version of iOS, if you say radius server host 10.10.10.10, the old style of doing it, it will give you a warning saying that that command line is going to be deprecated soon. Please move to using radius server, the new way. So the new way of doing it at global config, same command to start with is triple A new model. Then we say radius server server one. So we give it a name and that will take us to a sub command menu for configuring the radius server. In there, we specify the IP address. So we say address IPv4 10.10.10.10 for our example, and then key flat box one, which matches the key that we configured on the AAA server to authenticate this particular router or switch. Then for redundancy, we've got a second server. So we've got radius server server two, address IPv4 10.10.10.11 and the key is flat box two. The name that you give them there, it doesn't have to match the host name of the server. It's just a name so that it can be recognized in iOS. Then we've got triple A group server radius. I've called it FBRG again, and I say server name server one and server name server two to group both of those servers that we configured into this group. Then to enable triple A authentication, we've got triple A authentication, default group FBRG local. So again, it will use the radius servers first. If they're not available, then it will fall back to using the local username. Okay, so that's the new configuration. And that was for radius. Let's have a look at our TACAX configuration as well. This is going to be pretty much exactly the same, but we use the keyword of TACAX server rather than the keyword of radius. So same kind of config again, we've got username, backup admin, secret, flat box one as our backup user in case we lose connectivity to the TACAC server, triple A new model, TACAC server host, 10.10.10.10, key flat box one, then a second server for redundancy, TACAC server host, 10.10.10.11, key flat box two, then our group, triple A group server, TACAC plus, FBTG, I've called it FBTG for flat box TACAX plus group this time, server 10.10.10.10 and 10.10.10.11. And then to enable the authentication, AAA authentication login, default group FBTG is the first choice and then fall back to local as the second choice. Just like with Radius, this is the old configuration. We have a new configuration for TACAX as well, which again matches the new configuration for Radius. So here, if we say TACX server host 10.10.10.10, the old command will get a warning that it's being deprecated. Then our new command syntax is username backup admin, secret black box one, same command as before to configure the backup user. Triple A new model, TACX server server one, address IPv4 10.10.10.10 and key flat box one. We repeat those commands for server two with its IP address. Then triple A group server TACAX plus FBTG, I've called it for the name, specify those two servers, server one and server two. And then finally, triple A authentication, default group. First choice is the group FBTG. The second choice is local. Okay, so that is how we do our triple A configuration. I'll see you in the next lecture for some best practice security commands that we want to do on our routers and switches. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.